Hello everyone, welcome to video 3 of chapter 5. Here we'll take another example for sensitivity analysis. This is taken from the book, example 5.1.2. Here um, we are going to make boats, two types, A and B, with various resources needed and the information is given in this table. And we should be pretty familiar with such a presentation. We have aluminum, machine time and labor as three resources. How much they are needed for each boat is listed here. And then, then you can sell the boat with this price. And then here's the limit of your resource. It's capped. Okay. So we can set up two variables, x1 and x2 to be um, the, uh, the number of boat A and B respectively we'll be making, then um, your goal is to maximize your profit, which is this one here, subject to the constraint where you have the limit. So each row here gives me a constraint less than or equal to, okay? And then of course the variables are restricted, okay? So here I put this 2000 to be red, and we'll get back to that. So the problem is in max form, and um, we can put it in standard form, in canonical form. We can solve it by the LP assistant. I'd encourage you to do that by yourself. And then here we record the final finding. So we find out that the max for the Z is 2750, is obtained at this X star. 25, 25. That means you make 25 of boat A and 25 of boat B to maximize your profit. Okay, so this problem is solved. But now um, we have a new situation. So the aluminum price now is changing in the market. So you see why I put this 2000 to be red. That's exactly for the aluminum price. If the price changes, how does it affect the solution of my LP problem, of the max problem? Okay, so let's analyze that situation. So we form the dual problem of the, um, the max problem, and we call the problem D here. So the max problem becomes the main problem, and the constraint appears here in the objective function. So we keep the 2000 in red to see its effect in the final presentation. And then I have three variables for the three constraints. And then the constraints are changed with the bigger than equal sign. Okay, And we shall be quite comfortable with such a formulation. And let's see, for this mean problem, they sit in a mean form and we can solve it also. Okay, let's say we put it in an LP assistant and we pivoted and then we found the solution. So the, not surprisingly, the minimum of the mean is 2750, which is the same as the max of Z, that's duality theorem. And the optimal solution is Y star, which is these three numbers, 7 over 16, 0, 75 over 8. Okay. Okay, so... What is interesting here is what I'm going, I'm writing out right now. So by duality theorem, we know the Z max equal to V min. And what is V min? Well, that's the minimum value of V evaluated at the optimal point. So let's write it out. How is it being computed? So that will be 2000 times Y1, 7 over 16, and then 300 times Y2, which is zero, and then um, 200 times y3, which is 75 over 8. So z max in the end actually is computed in this way. And we see that the 2000, the aluminum price, appears right here. So you see, this aluminum price is uh, multiplied by 7 over 16, that is the solution in the y star, the first component. And then we see if we vary this one by one unit, 
as long as that is the solution for y star, the change in the z max will be this ratio here, 7 over 16. Okay, so let's put these in words. This is our conclusion. So there is a condition here. So as long as y star is the optimal point for the dual problem, then an increase of a unit from the aluminum price of 2000 here would cause an increase of uh, 7 over 16 in the Z max. Okay, so here you see the dual problem is actually quite important for the original problem. Let's make a further observation. Now we see that, okay, so let's write it out again. Z max is computed like that. Aluminum, machine time, and total labor. And then we see that interestingly, there is a zero here. So um, let's say I want to change the machine time a little bit. And then we see that a change here will make no difference because it's multiplied by zero. Why? Why does that happen? Okay, then let's take a look at um, the original LP problem and then let's take a look at the slack um, at the optimal point x star. So let's put the x star value in, in the condition, and then look at if there are any slack. So we found out for aluminum, I get 2000 minus 2000 is zero. For the machine time, I get 300 minus 275. I have a 25, which is strictly positive. Okay, so no zero slack. And then for labor, I get zero again. So what does it mean this machine time has slack? So we see that at that optimal solution point x star, the machine time is underused resource. Okay, there's additional time you could use it, and therefore increasing it won't change the product or profit. Okay, so um, finally, let's introduce a notation. So the solution y star here for the dual problem in this setting carries a name. It is called the shadow price. So um, what does it mean, shadow price? That means this solution here would indicate the rate of change in the optimal value with respect to the change in the constraints. You see, it's from this equation that you see how this is actually the price you would pay if you make one unit change in the constraint. Okay, so I um, hope you enjoyed this video and um, next time we'll go to chapter 5.2 and continue our study. See you then.